We're now going to hear from a young lady who uh, has been homeschooled through, through high school, who is the oldest of five children, and so she says her parents had a handful, and um, who has gone on to post-secondary and is now a, a teacher in the system. And all this, she probably, like Simon, never went into a classroom until she had to, had to uh, do her intern teaching. So we have with us, uh, please welcome Brianna Adrian. Is that close enough or a little closer? Good, just leave it. Right. So good morning. In my books, it's still morning. My name is Brianna Adrian. Um, I, yeah, was homeschooled from grade one to 12, and I currently teach Montessori grade one um, at a Catholic school in Grand Prairie, Alberta. Um, it's kind of funny because we have a new EA, a new um, educational assistant at our school, and she was supervising the kindergarten playground with me yesterday. I turned my back for a second, for one second, to turn around. And right as I turned around, a little boy fell off the slide. He was fine, but as we were talking, the EA mentioned that she had been a geriatric nurse for 20 years. She said she used to think her job was stressful, but that she couldn't believe the responsibility that was on teachers and that one person can be in charge of 25 little kids at a time. I looked at her and I was like, I know, right? Like, who made this up? <laughs> Yet, in being homeschooled, moments like that are just a continuation of my life, which is essentially crowd control. Like most homeschoolers, um, I was in a family that's, you know, I guess slightly larger than the average family. I'm the oldest of five. And you turn your back and someone falls down the stairs. And you just pick them up and you keep going because you don't have another choice. And this is just how we roll. In homeschooling, in so many ways, you do have the potential to have the best education possible. Um, this was evident in the grad panel this morning, all the different ways that they achieved success and how they used it to their advantage. Um, I decided to take the classical education route through high school. This was definitely the best option for me. Um, I do want to point out um, that in, in my profession, in teaching, many of my colleagues um, are brilliant, but they were not homeschooled. And I'm always cautious when it comes to cause and effect. Because sometimes I'm like, well, you know, is it, is it just homeschooling? Or is it that, you know, my family was very dynamic and very education-based, and there was always a rich learning environment? You know, there's so many, so many factors that contribute to success. So as um, this talk progresses, I'm not necessarily saying that what I did is the magic formula and that it'll work for everybody. But I do believe that it provides a very balanced education that gives you a good shot at long-term success. Not too long ago, I was at a professional development seminar. You get to go to at least one or two a month in teaching. And as they spoke about their educational ideals, I felt just giddy inside because I kept thinking, wow, everything they're talking about was what I got at home. That was my experience. And they were talking about a concept called 21st century education. And I will explain that in a minute. Um, it's funny because when I was asked to speak, I was worried that I wouldn't have enough to say for 40 minutes. But as I started to think about homeschooling and its effect on my life and 21st century education and what today's employers are looking for and how homeschoolers really do, when we look at it, have an edge, I realized like, I, could, I could go on for hours. So this talk was like really long, and then I scaled it back, so <laughs> we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, but everything is so connected. Um, I guess my main point today um, is to talk about how homeschooling contributed to my success both in my studies um, in high school, um, in post-secondary education, in my career right now as a teacher, and in my life in general. Um, so I'm going to try to stick to that outline and not take too many, too many rabbit trails. So first of all, what is classical education? So my high school education largely consisted of wisdom online courses, such as the great books courses, the writing courses, Latin, Euclid's elements, politics, ancient music, ancient science, you get it. Socratic discussion is the basis of these courses, 
And it not only gave me an outlet to express my ideas and have them challenged, but it also prepared me for the college courses that I was um, about to take. Um, I do want you to know that when I went to college, um, especially the first year, I kept wondering, like, where's the hard stuff? Like, when is it going to get hard? Um, except, except for math, and we'll go more. And I, I find that to be kind of a recurring theme. But we'll do, we'll do more on that later. But I'll admit that in college, um, I was often disappointed at the lack of meaningful discussion and the sweeping generalizations that were made. I remember being in a college English class and thinking that Mr. Rajat, a tutor at Wisdom, would not approve of some of the ideas that were just being tossed around and taken as truth. It was incredible that so many didn't seem to use logic or reason at all. They would just take random ideas and jump on the bandwagon. Um, some keys to um, success in study that I learned over um, homeschooling, I was able to actually condense into three words. Um, and that is independent, or independence, discipline, and time management. Um, so the first one, independence, was huge to be in the driver's seat of your education. And I don't want to sound repetitive because I know that this was already covered. Um, but what I found with high school friends, you know, friends that I had when I was in high school who went to public school, is that their learning was so passive. They were being driven around. Um, and they were just being constantly chased for assignments and then they kind of and, and, and I, I really do, I try to stay away from the, the them and us, I, I do. But at the same time, I could definitely see that I knew I wanted to get my assignment done because I wanted to be done so I could go on to something else. Um, and that point of view um, helped me a lot in college because in college, nobody chases you around for any assignment. Um, and if you need any help after class, you need to make your own appointment at a time that works for your professor, which may not work with the bus schedule and may not work with anything else really going on in your life. So it's, it's actually something that's good to learn now. Um, when I went to college, people would always ask me, especially our neighbors, how the transition was from homeschooling to college. And I realized that one of the reasons why it was so smooth is I was already used to being in the driver's seat. Um, discipline, that's fairly straightforward. Um, the ability to make a goal and to carry it out, um, to, do, to do something even if you don't want to. Um, the third key to success in study that I found was time management. Whether we like it or not, there are deadlines in life. Um, I had a deadline for report cards yesterday, and on and on it goes for everything. Um, you have to manage your time so that you can get all your work done but something I found is it's important to manage your time so that you have fun too. Uh, many articles have been written on effectiveness and productivity so that when we think of time management, we often think that it's um, you know, how to be most effective at getting a certain task done. But it's very important to schedule in fun and downtime, like guilt-free downtime as well. Um, that was another asset of homeschooling for me is it was very much you work and then you play. Unless, of course, you think play is work, or work is play, in which case, you know, good, good for you. <laughs> but you can concentrate better because your learning itself is already concentrated. You're already learning exactly what you need to know. Um, and obviously, you learn very early on that if you hurry up and stay focused, it'll be over, over sooner. Um, I found that I work best at night. So even just kind of little things like that to know how to set yourself up for success. Um, even like I said, it, it's been report card week for me and, you know, setting my schedule to do report cards after dinner, I get like way better quality work. So, uh, figure out your prime time and make it work for you. So I feel that if you can develop those three skills in high school, you're set because these skills develop naturally in homeschooling and we found especially in classical education. Um, a big idea in the world of education right now is 21st century um, learning. I don't know if anyone here has heard of that term before. Maybe not quite. Um, there's, there's various models and various acronyms that, um, that relate to it, but they mainly revolve around four C's. And the four C's are creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. 
Now already, as you think of that, a lot of those skills are already built into your homeschool day. Um, these are the things that employers are looking for, so it's best to start practicing them now. So the first one is creativity and innovation. So um, this skill involves brainstorming and creating ideas, evaluating ideas, because just because you have a good idea doesn't mean you know, it's maybe very helpful or useful to anyone. Um, and viewing failure as part of the process. And um, that's something that I really learned, um, that failure is not a showstopper. And it actually can be very good for you, and you can grow even more because of it. It's so easy to say, accept failure and move on. But when I was in college, I struggled with a math course. I was one of the first homeschoolers in our area, in the Grand Prairie area, to get accepted into Grand Prairie Regional College. Um, I took, obviously, their Bachelor of Education, their elementary program. And I'll admit, I felt a certain pressure to get straight A's. You probably know all those studies that your mom read to you about homeschoolers <laughs> scoring above average consistently and all that. And, <laughs> and I felt really pressured, like, oh, wow, I have to you know, be, be really good, and we were part of, you know, different homeschool groups, and I was like, oh no, they're all looking at me. Um, but through, throughout the semester, um, my math grades were steadily decreasing, and a couple of people thought maybe I should drop the course, but I have unshakable hope, which is both a blessing and a curse. Um, I'll go on a little rabbit trail, actually. I was at a conference called Rise Up last year, and one of the speakers um, had us write a six-word memoir, so basically your life in six words. And I realized that mine is don't know what I can't do because consistently I don't know I can't do it. So I always try. And I always, always think I can do it. And you know, a lot of the times, like, I can, which is, <laughs> which is kind of amazing. <laughs> I honestly surprise myself sometimes. I'm like, oh, good job. Um, but anyway, I didn't end up dropping the course because the final was worth 40% and I thought I could pull it off. On Christmas Eve Eve, I looked online at my grades and I saw a big red F. It was actually red. It was a big red F. <laughs> and I was, I was just shocked. I, I didn't want to tell my parents. I felt I had let homeschoolers everywhere down. And I didn't know if I should even tell anyone because people were like, oh, how's your semester? And I'm like, oh, good, you know. <laughs> but I will have you know that the next semester I got through Christmas. And the next semester I did take it again and I got a B, which is decent. Okay, passing is C minus. <laughs> but it's funny because the professor would look at my work and she could not figure out how I got the right answer because it wasn't always the formula that she taught. So I don't know if I was being a creative problem solver or if I'm just secretly a genius, I don't know. <laughs> but the reason I tell this story is because I found we all need permission to fail. I have talked to quite a few young homeschoolers where the only thing keeping them from pursuing a post-secondary education is fear of failure. My favorite part of the story is that I got over my pride, I got to be in the same math course the next semester, and that I even kept a high GPA that year and almost made the dean's list despite a failed course. Um, that's the main point, though, is that fail, failure doesn't kill you. And it can actually, I feel like it's been very instrumental um, in a lot of ways. I'm um, telling the story has been um, helpful to other people. And also, it, it was good for me because things overall in my life come fairly easily. And it was good for me to know what it was like to try and try and still fail. And then try again and, and get it finally, but it took a lot. Um, and also, just as a quick disclaimer, I'm not blaming homeschooling um, for my, my struggles in math. I honestly feel that like, even if I'd gone to school, even if I'd been very, very diligent, like more diligent than I had been in high school, it is something that I've just always struggled with. So you do have to give yourself um, a bit of leeway when it comes to, you know, your your gift isn't going to be in everything. So um, I think we have to watch that we don't attribute um, just normal failures to homeschooling when it could be there regardless. So 
that's something just to watch for. All right, so our next one, so critical thinking and problem solving, and the third C. I think we're on the third C. Second C, sorry. Um, so that is listening to another's ideas and evaluating it, and listening to another's view without letting it change your own. Um, very important to use to develop your reason and your logic and to use it. Um, this was especially helpful in college because you are just inundated with a variety of views and like I said some of it you're like wow like where do you come up with that but it's it's very important to to listen to be respectful and yet to still maintain your own integrity not to um, not to just let it change you. Uh, the third C collaboration uh, working effectively and respect, respectfully with diverse teams um, and being flexible. Um, flexibility is sometimes, I think, kind of looked over as an asset, but I had, we have three formal teaching evaluations. Um, I've been teaching for three years, so I've had a few, a few evaluations. And something that keeps coming up is my ability to be flexible. And I didn't think it was that big of a deal, but they, the admin actually made a huge deal of it. Um, the fact that we're able to value the other and sometimes take the lesser part. Um, there's so many little things that come up within a school day in grade one. And to be flexible and still maintain you know, a cheerful attitude and know that just because you know, everything is falling apart doesn't mean your whole day is gone um, is very important. <laughs> and everything has fallen apart, trust me. Uh, communication. Communicating your ideas in a manner that is respectful. Um, that is a very good skill to have. Because you can have really good ideas, but if you cannot communicate them in such a way that other people buy into it or see the value in it, um, you're, you're not quite there. The Wisdom Online courses really helped with this. Um, lots of times we would debate really controversial current issues. On being avid debaters, some of us would like to play the devil's advocate. And other times the topic of religion would come up and we learn to be respectful and sensitive to others while maintaining our own integrity. So again, to know how to you know, accept another person but not necessarily adopt the idea. Although these things sound complicated, they also develop very naturally in the homeschool setting. The diversity of opinion and the ways we were taught to respectfully talk through issues and communicate our ideas in the online courses, because these online courses did make up a very vital part of my high school education, um, prepared me for effective communication in the workplace. In the last month, I have had meetings with child psychologists, principals, speech pathologists, parents, and I've read a variety of medical and ed psych reports. Good communication habits have been a great asset in these types of situations. Um, much of my success has come from the ability to learn. It sounds almost too simplistic to mention, but it has honestly been one of my greatest assets. Um, especially during my first couple teaching practicums, um, as Ken Oster kind of had mentioned, I hadn't been in a school uh, very much at all. And um, so even just little things that kind of happen throughout the day, um, just the ability to kind of pick up on it and learn and keep learning and failing and learning and moving on. Uh, one of my mentor teachers at the school that I work at has told me this a few times. She's looked at me and just been like, wow, Brianne, you can learn. You want it. And I think that's a big part of authentic learning is wanting it. Um, obviously, you will always learn more about something that you are passionate about. Um, so it's very important to, to find that passion, to find where it is, and then to just research it and, and learn as much as you can. And also to be open as well to learning different things that maybe you wouldn't think really were your passion or just, just for the sake of knowing. Um, the third point was keys to success in life. It's like, hmm. And I'd have to say that having, having reflected on this a lot in the past few weeks, um, I realized that homeschooling provided me with the time to figure out who I was and what makes me come alive. It challenged me to a closer relationship with God 
and it helped me to become a better version of myself. It gave me time to pursue different hobbies and to find out what I like to do in my free time. My top three hobbies, personally, are country dancing, uh, playing piano, and traveling. Um, I was a teacher assistant at the Country Western Dance Club in Grand Prairie for a few years. And um, piano, obviously, as anyone who's taken piano, is, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's fun and you're so glad you know how to play, but it is such a journey to get to the point where you can just sit down and play. And traveling, um, my first year of college, I took the money that I'd saved for a car and I went to Ireland and Scotland with a few girlfriends for a month. And it was completely worth the bus rides for the next three years. <laughs> I also was able to go to World Youth Day in Spain with a friend for two weeks. And um, I just love going places, I guess. Um, I've been to the States a few times. I want to go to Italy next. Um, and all these things, you'll notice, they take time to learn, um, dancing and piano especially. Or they take money, like travel. And this effectively kept me out of a lot of trouble in college. <laughs> I love to learn. There's an app for the iPhone. I don't know if any of you have it. It's called Zite, Z-I-T-E. And it's essentially a personalized magazine. And you just you download the app, and there's a whole bunch of topics, and you check off the topics that you're interested in. Um, some of mine are like psychology <laughs> and technology. Um, other ones include like cooking, and there's just so many. Um, sciences, stuff like that. And so whenever you open the app, the latest articles on the topics that you've chosen come up. And it's a great way to stay updated on your interests. And it's also a great way to, um, to learn without, I guess, having to put too much effort into it, as horrible as that sounds. Because <laughs> I think a lot of us can go on our iPhone and, you know, you go to Facebook or whatever and you know, at the, at, the, at the end of the day, it's, it's kind of a waste of time. And, um, but if, if you just open up Zite, and I'm not getting paid anything for, you know, for this, so this is actually really cool. Um, but, you know, even if, if you're going somewhere, whatever, it's kind of a great way to just kind of stay updated on things that maybe you're kind of interested in. You know, you don't really want to, you know, sit down and research, per se, but, you know, you would just kind of look into it if it was on your phone randomly, right? Looking back, homeschooling has given me a perspective and a sense of humor, and that sort of thinking outside the box. So I generally don't take myself or life too seriously. This alone has been another asset, because you're able to put up with so much change, and it really doesn't bother you. Um, of course, sometimes you have to watch it, because you can, <laughs> you can end up getting the short end of the stick because you're very flexible and you're such a good sport. People know you can handle it. And at the same time, um, it is true, and you know that it's, it's really not a big deal. Um, in the world of teaching, prep time is you know, very, um, very valuable. You know, it's your two hours a week where you get to do essentially whatever kind of prep you need to do. And they asked if they could put mine on Fridays, and we have PD days where the kids don't come to school two Fridays a month, so I miss quite a few preps. So it's, it's funny. Um, how even that has turned into such an asset, you know, that they could come to me and, and ask for that. I find that often people don't realize what a treasure they have in someone who has been homeschooled. But I find that even more so we, as homeschoolers, don't realize what we have to offer. And we don't realize that what we have is so very valuable in the workplace and in life in general. So I wish you all the best as you go forward in confidence. Thank you. Um, we do have about 10 minutes for questions, if anybody has any. Unless you don't, and then you can go back. Is your own classroom, now that you're a teacher, any different than it would have been had you come through the system? Is it any different as a result of your homeschool background? You know, I'm glad you asked that because I teach Montessori grade one. Um, the Montessori program is more delight directed in a sense. We still have to teach through the Alberta program of studies, 
um, but the kids get a lot more flexibility, and I find that it was a very it was a very natural way for me to teach, and it was actually such a blessing that I got that job because it's something that was actually quite similar to our homeschooling, um, where you know, in one morning you can have kids who are working on LA and math and science and geography, all in different groups around the classroom. So I would say that homeschooling has made me definitely more, more flexible that way. Um, I saw it especially um, in looking at other colleagues who were kind of having a hard time um, going from, okay, well, we do LA block one, and then we do LA block two, and then we do math block three, you know, that kind of deal where everything's just very regimented. Um, and for me, I just, I loved the flexibility of it. So in a way, I would say that homeschooling has definitely been an asset when it comes to teaching Montessori. Awesome. So I'm curious, your application process to college, where did you use a portfolio or challenge exams? And did you go directly into the education program or did you have to do a general year first? Okay. Um, well, I decided to go to college in August. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so there was that. But um, we made an appointment with the dean um, at Grand Prairie Regional College, and we had brought, Wisdom Homeschooling was very supportive, so we had my high school transcript and everything, and they, they took that. He was, he was very hesitant at first, so the one-on-one -on -one conversation with him uh, was very valuable. Um, I went straight into the education program because um, at Grand Prairie Regional College, they're collaborative with the U of A, and you begin taking education courses from your first year. Um, I remember there possibly being a mix-up that I was originally in general studies and then I realized I was supposed to be in the education program and I went to somebody and just switched it. So <laughs> that may have been a fluke, I don't know. But, um, but overall, you know, it was, it was it was hard in that, I guess, some of the attitudes, especially from the dean, weren't very positive. Um, but at the same time, because I had taken so many online courses and that was all documented, um, other grades that I had um, from other courses that I did just at home, um, it, all, it all really spoke for itself that way. And so getting in using a high school transcript worked for us through Wisdom. Does that answer your question? Okay. You said that you said that the key was the face-to-face -face, mm -hmm. uh, communication. Can you can you plumb what it was in that? I mean, obviously you said your transcript and stuff was helpful, but but all that stuff he could read without meeting you. What what was it in that conversation? Do you think that may have you know that thrown it thrown that made it the difference? Um, I think it was him seeing that I really wanted it. Um, that. Mom and I, we, we walked into the office and we were both very confident about um, the homeschooling that I'd done. My mom was very um, straightforward about my work ethic through school, um, about the value of the courses that I'd taken um, through college, or sorry, through, through high school, the, the wisdom online courses. Um, so I think he was more or less, I don't know, maybe he was just trying to get rid of us. He's like, sure, try it out. <laughs> but, um, I find that, <laughs> that the face-to-face, -face, I think it was good because he could really just put kind of a face to the name. Um, that said, GPRC is significantly smaller than University of Alberta, or like the actual University of Alberta, um, and you know other larger conferences or uh, colleges that you may be trying to get into. So I can't say that that would work every time, but it worked for us. I have two questions, one pretty practical, and then one is, um, I'll just leave it up to you how you're gonna answer it. Okay. Um, you said you took a lot of uh, wisdom online courses. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know how many courses you had in a, in a term, um, that sort of thing, and then I'll just ask the other one. And if you could speak more about, um, you mentioned the idea of figuring out who you are mm -hmm. and what makes you alive. Okay. And, and that, because um, I can't do it for my kid, right? Yep. So you, you have to figure it out yourself. Yeah, but then I think uh, hopefully you can inspire others with what you're going to say. So right. there's just two things. Thanks. Absolutely, okay. 
Um, I'm sorry, what was your first question? <laughs> oh, how many courses I took? Okay, that really depended um, on the semester. I found like when you take basic writing, or at least when I took it, or advanced writing, um, I would maybe take like one other course because there's an essay due. I think there was one due like every week or every, it felt like every week, I don't know, it was every two weeks. Um, so that, that really depended. Um, there, there is a lot of reading to those courses, so I don't actually remember taking more than two or three. I think I took math and then maybe one or two other ones, like the Euclid's elements. Um, and it is important, you know, to, to read as much as possible kind of during, during the course read and um, just for the discussions, because that's really where um, the value was for me. Um, and then in regarding regarding um, personal development, there are some really good books actually by Matthew Kelly. Um, one of them is called Perfectly Yourself, and that, that really made a difference reading that book. Um, I guess it's just kind of trying different things. Um, I've been able to, um, you know, I tried, for example, snowmobiling with my dad and my brother, and that didn't go so well. That was not my thing. Um, <laughs> so some of it is just like trial and error. See what makes you come alive. I found with dancing, I love music, and I love, you know, moving to music. So that was something that was very natural. I feel like I'm flying when I dance, and I love that feeling. So just kind of things that you can do that are positive and that de-stress, and that just kind of really, really helps you. Um, having good friends helps, that's kind of a hard one because you can't just bring up a friend, but overall, um, you know, we were part of different homeschool groups and different church groups, um, some of which, you know, had, you know, kids who, who went to school as well. Um, that was very helpful through that. Um, I would have to say that I really learned a lot about myself, this sounds so cliche, but even just talking to your parents and just, and they were very, my dad especially is generally a very good listener, and he would like listen to me till two in the morning, and I'd like go off on something that happened and whatever. But it's funny how you can, by hearing yourself talk, you can actually learn what you stand for, and you just need somebody just to listen to you tell yourself who you are. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. So that was huge. So managing the online program, I love you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious because really there's been quite a family, a wisdom family that's grown up. Uh, some have taken fewer courses, some many. I'm curious in this audience if you'd stand up if you've taken an online class with wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, um, spread the good news of what it does in terms of education um, and talk to each other. And if you're interested in the online program, come see me as well. I had to put a little plug in there. Thank yeah, you. no, I can't say enough about it. It's very, very helpful. So, Brianna, you, you spoke about the, the pressure you felt as a student going into college you know, as, as a homeschooler. Yeah. <clears throat> What's been your experience as a homeschooler within the professional field of education? Wow, that's a good question. Um, you know, I, I don't find the pressure so much um, to, I guess, to pass and to succeed and to make the dean's list. Um, I would say as a homeschooler, um, like my employers, you mean? I would say my, my employers are, are very happy, but I, I don't usually... Um, I guess really advertise it too much. If it comes up, if somebody asks me, I'll, you know, obviously I'll tell them. Um, not that it's a big secret, but it isn't. I guess my, my experience is that I am just like everyone else, but um, I would say that I do, I don't want to brag, but I would say that I do <laughs> feel a lot of success in my profession, and I know a lot of it is because of homeschooling. However, I don't feel set apart or even pressured because I'm a homeschooler in the, in the workforce now. Does, does that kind of make sense? Okay, I hope that answers your question. Awesome. Not sure how we're doing for time. We're good, okay. 
there are any more? Time for maybe one more. Perfect, thank you very much. Thank you, Brianne. Isn't the uh, face of homeschooling charming? And you know, and we, we had this great diversity on our panel. <laughs> I hate chemistry. I'm passionate about chemistry. Wonderful. <laughs> and just the diversity that exists in this room is, um, I hate, hate to use words like this, but is powerful. Uh, is powerful in the world because what, what is happening is these young individuals are being free to grow into who they are as opposed to being in a system or within a society, within a peer structure that demands that they be like other people. And this freedom is brilliant because God does brilliant work, and, and your cooperation is, makes all the difference. This afternoon, we're, it's going to just get, it's just not going to get any worse. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to say it's going to get better and better, because Brian would leave in a huff. <laughs> we'll start this afternoon with an argument between a father and son about homeschooling. And then we'll go on to a panel of parents who have homeschooled through high school, getting some breadth on, on their experiences. And then we're going to have Tim Hoven, who's a homeschooling dad and, and an organic farmer, who's going to cap off the day, I think, with... And, and interestingly, listening to the things that Brianne was saying, that our panelists have said already, I'm hearing some of Tim's themes that he'll just bring back to you in a... I suspect he'll pull the whole day together. So use this lunch hour, please, to network, especially, you know, we, we, we want to, you know, make use of the opportunity to talk to all these institutions, and uh, we'll come back. We want to start at one sharp, so if you come back at 5-2, it's exactly an hour from now. Shall we just pray grace? Lord God, thank you for the gift of this time together, thank you for the gift of community, of friends. We thank you also for the gift of food that you give us that we almost take for granted in a world where so many go without. We ask you to bless our time together and to bless this food in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.